This video was sponsored by Asus. If you ask a creative how they come up with their ideas, you're likely to get a response like this. It's not how, it's when. The creative spark hits us at the most unexpected of times, whether you're heading into work or walking home, on a plane or visiting a new city. Ideas can come at you at a moment's notice and you need to be ready for them because unfortunately, they're also fleeting. I can't tell you how many times I've stumbled upon an idea, concept or solution only to have it slip through my fingers by the time I reach my studio. But what if there was a small portable device you could take everywhere you go, a device for creatives? This is the Zenbook Duo, and whether you're a designer, photographer, videographer, content curator or even gamer, this laptop promises to take your creativity to the next level. And well, here on Maker's Muse, I'm all about that. The Zenbook Duo is equipped with two screens, a discrete GPU, and one of the world's first laptops to feature a 10th gen Intel Core i7 processor. But specs are specs, so to truly get a feel for this laptop, I brought it with me to the RoboWars Nationals in Brisbane, Australia, to see just how the Zenbook Duo could empower my creativity when on the go, and I'm bringing you along for the ride. Let's get started. Alrighty, first stop, cafe and my much needed morning caffeine. Ice latte preferred, thank you very much. Coming in at only one and a half kilos, the Zenbook Duo is quite small and fits comfortably in my camera backpack, but despite its size, it's one serious bit of hardware with a 14 inch full HD 1920 by 1080 p display with 100% sRGB color gamut and is Pantone validated. But all of that aside, it's impossible to not take instant notice of that second screen that Asus is calling the ScreenPad Plus. This 12.9 inch secondary display is effectively a 1080p screen split in half, but it's so much more than just a second monitor. It's actually a touch screen with tons of productivity potential and Asus has implemented a range of UI tweaks so you can get the most out of it. When you drag windows, an action menu pops up allowing you to quickly send apps to the ScreenPad Plus or to add the app to the launcher for quick access, as well as dedicated hardware buttons to quickly throw apps between the two screens or to turn the ScreenPad Plus off if you don't need it. And with modular programs like Premiere Pro, you can split off windows such as the timeline or audio monitor, for example, into the ScreenPad Plus area. There are heaps of ways you can leverage it to improve productivity, but for now, I knocked out a few emails, replied to some comments, and then it was time to start my day. It's a long drive to the airport, so I always take the opportunity to stop by the botanical gardens on the way if I have the time, and now it's spring, I simply couldn't resist. This is where I go to chill, take photos of the wildlife, and where I tend to really let my mind wander. It really is gorgeous in spring with the fresh flowers and nesting birds, and it really is quite magical to just relax on a park bench and do a little bit of ideation in such an environment. But I had a flight to catch, so onward to the airport. I grabbed some overpriced lunch and used my waiting time for my flight to look through photos I took at the park using the ScreenPad Plus to sort through the folder and the main display to view and apply some light enhancements and cropping. For I.O. on the Zenbook Duo, there's two USB 3.1 ports, a USB-C, full-size HDMI and micro SD card slot for quickly ingesting photos and footage, though you will need a dongle if you use a full-size SD. Oh, and there's a headphone jack. I really do appreciate that. And because it's equipped with a 70 watt hour battery and up to 22 hours of battery life, I didn't have to be that guy hanging off the only available PowerPoint in the airport. In fact, I didn't have to recharge this thing the whole day, and that's admittedly quite a new experience for me. When it comes to flying though, let's be real, productivity goes out the window, at least for me at least. I like to self-indulge on occasion, and on the plane, it's all about keeping myself entertained during the flight. Yes, I did say this notebook is great for gaming too, and I certainly wasn't disappointed. Next day was the first of the RoboWars competition. One of my favorite parts about the RoboWars community is the sheer variety of design approaches. Every designer has their own style, their flair that makes their robots stand out among the rest. I was honored to be MC this year, taking care to note down each name of the robots, their builders, and what makes them special. 
I particularly love the aesthetic of these spinning weapon blades some of the machines employ because yeah, they're designed to smash each other to pieces in a specially designed arena and yes, they do hit quite hard. And then, I had an idea. So we just got back to the hotel after the first day of the Robo Wars competition in Brisbane. It was absolutely brutal, amazing, I love it. Um, and it's really hot, and my drink is making all this condensation on the table. So I sort of need a coaster, and I thought, the weapon discs look a lot like coasters, and it gave me this idea that I could make these cool coasters inspired with ro by robot combat disc design. So I'm gonna have a crack drawing some up in Fusion 360. So after an incredible weekend of robot combat, I spent that evening and the flight home 3D modeling up some concepts and doing a few test renders. Somewhere along the line, I realized I could throw a Twitch stream on at the same time on the screen pad plus while I was 3D modeling, which was awesome. I normally like working with streams on a secondary monitor back home, but now I can do it wherever I am as long as there's an internet connection or I can just tether with my phone. After some tests, I settled on these designs, so I sent them to the laser cutter to cut from some thin plywood. Don't worry guys, full review of this laser cutter is coming very shortly. I couldn't quite decide if I wanted the pattern to be cut all the way through or just marked with a laser, so I did a mix of both, and these were my results. They cleaned up quite nicely with just a little bit of sandpaper, and here we go after being coated with just a little bit of clear lacquer. This one's probably the most traditional disc design that I chose, and it looks okay, but my favorite by far is this really organic crazy one. It has all these teeth, it's got nine teeth on it, and it's got this crazy intricate pattern inside that almost looks like thorns. But the one that works the best is this one, which has a full etch, and this one was actually a complete accident in Fusion 360 when I was changing around some things while editing on the laptop. This particular unit is equipped with a 10th gen Intel Core i5 and 8 gigs of RAM, and it didn't break a sweat running Illustrator or Fusion 360. However, the ZenBook Duo is also available with a 10th gen Intel Core i7 and up to 16 gigs of RAM. I am very much happy with the final results of my combat robot inspired weapon disc coasters that I got inspired by by going to the Robo Wars competition in Brisbane and it was only really possible because I was able to strike when the iron was hot by using the ZenBook Duo to do my ideation and CAD process completely away from my home studio. Thank you very much for watching. You can find more information on the ZenBook Duo in the video description. And if you found this video valuable, then maybe consider subscribing. I am very selective with which companies I work with and a huge thank you to Asus for sponsoring this video and hooking me up with the ZenBook Duo to use on my creative exploits. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys, bye.